Hi, this is Abby Jo at Forgotten Way Farms and welcome to my cottage kitchen. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a freezer meal from scratch recipes and I think it'll be great for all those summertime projects and gardening just to have good, quick, easy food in the freezer that's delicious and homemade. I'm gonna be doing pizza crust again because I've had so many of you guys just respond so well to the pizza crust and I thought I would show you a couple variations that you can do with that pizza crust answer some questions and I think I'm just gonna make a bunch of pizza crust for the freezer because it is absolutely one of my favorite go-tos during the summertime, especially when you're out gardening, when you're going out on a picnic or you get home and you're tired and you're hot. I just love pizza crust because it's just so versatile. That's what I love about freezer meals. And so today I'm going to also, besides the pizza crust, we're gonna be making breakfast burritos, which I love breakfast burritos. They're such a huge hit in our family. And I'm gonna be roasting those potatoes. I'm, we're not gonna use frozen potatoes. We're just gonna grab potatoes because they're so cheap just to buy in a big 10 pound sack and chop those up, roast those, and add them to our delicious breakfast burritos with lots of good stuff. It's gonna be really fun to show you my favorite way of doing breakfast burritos. We're gonna do loaded cheese and bacon hamburger patties for the freezer. We're going to make grandma's old fashioned tater tot casserole, which is just an ode to my grandmother. And I love making that, it's super kid friendly. And I make my own bechamel sauce with mushrooms in it. And I'll tell you a little story that goes with that. And let me see, what else are we gonna do? Oh, and we're gonna do my husband's marinated chicken, which I love putting marinated chicken in the freezer because when you're ready to do a barbecue, just pull it out the night before or the morning of, and you have that meat all marinated, all ready, and just ready to go. As you guys know that have been watching me for a while, that I really believe in taking a break during a long day of making food because I feel like, you know, it, this is my job. I make good food for my family. It's one of my jobs. And I think that, you know, at work people take coffee breaks and it's like, I think it's just good. I think sometimes as a homemaker, we're too hard on ourselves and we think, oh, I just gotta go, go, go. But you can actually take a moment to rest and enjoy your day, even if you're doing a lot of work. It really helps you to just kind of bring in that calmness to your day and so as you know, I stay hydrated and I take breaks. And that means I'm sipping on water, tea, sparkling water, and then I always try to take a coffee or tea break during my long day of cooking. As I was talking about staying hydrated, I got my full thing of water right here. I have leftover coffee that I'm probably gonna make a delicious iced coffee with later on in the day. And then I've got some delicious lemonade tea here and I'm going to just have these all ready for me to enjoy throughout the day of cooking. Some little tips and tricks here that I do when I get ready for a freezer meal day is I get, make sure that cheese is grated. I make sure my meat is set out the night before. I usually have a list of ingredients for each dish so I can just kind of quickly look down at it and then I know what I have to do next. And I also make sure that my counters are clean, the dishes are done, and I just have a good workspace and it makes the whole process so much easier. I'm chopping these potatoes up with the skins on and I'm going to be adding some oil and seasoning. Okay, I'm just gonna get my hands in here and just mix it up real beautiful. You guys have been asking me about what salt I use and I do have pink salt that I've been using up in my little canister right by the stove. Um, I've been using that up because I got some for Christmas and I love that. But the regular salt that I buy is just Redmond's Ancient Sea Salt. It has a ton of minerals in it and I buy it in bulk and just put it in my antique salt shaker. And then I'm gonna roast it at like 400, 425 
until they get nice and crispy, which, you know, it really varies. It depends sometimes on the potato and the moisture. So I just kind of keep my eyes on it, but you know, 20 to 30 minutes a lot of times. But I have actually had to do a little longer sometimes if my potato chunks are too big or whatever. So um, yeah, so we're just gonna roast those and get them in the oven. I just got the potatoes in the oven and now I'm gonna get the two bags of marinated chicken ready for the freezer. I just put them in three to a bag, they're really big. And I will actually be cutting these up to make kebabs later on once they're defrosted. That's just how I do it. You can pre-cut things smaller if you want, but I'm just gonna be doing that. So they're ready for the barbecue and I'll show you what I use. Just one second, I just put olive oil in and now I'm adding the balsamic vinegar, adding some of this rosemary roasted garlic and sea salt. Sometimes I um, use a Mediterranean blend. Actually, that's what the recipe says, but I'm out of it right now. So I just grab this and it looks just great. And first I wanna show you what I'm gonna do with them. I use these metal skewers here and they're really super long. I got these at a thrift store and I love them. I mean, you can see how long these guys are. And I cut up the chicken meat when it's all defrosted and I add pineapple, zucchini, mushrooms, and meat. And then I have my husband barbecue it and it is so good. It's one of those wonderful summer, nice, easy meals. And then, you know, you can have a side of salad, fresh fruit, baked potatoes, rice, whatever you wanna do. But the main part of it is all done and easy and ready to go. And a little money saving tip here is right now I am finding sales on pineapple all the time. Like this was $1.69 at Walmart, I think. And I grab several of these and then I dice them up, put them in a freezer bag and they freeze just fine or just get right on it and barbecue that with your meat after it's done marinating. adding lots of fresh garlic to this marinade. The recipe for this marinade will be in the description below. Oh, that garlic smells amazing. All right, so you seal the bag and then you're just gonna gently just massage all of that goodness in really good, mix it up super good and then it will be ready to go into the freezer or if you're just wanting to eat it right now put it in the fridge and let it marinate all day and then use it in the evening the barbecue and it, you know I'm using this for a barbecue but this would be just as good in a crock pot or baking it in your oven okay these are just beautiful I'm going to Take all of these potatoes and put them on here and then I'm going to use this pan to put bacon in the oven and get that baked up for our hamburger cheddar patties. And then I'm just going to use this pan. I'm not even going to wash it. I'm going to put the bacon on here and get the bacon cooking while I make the burritos so that it's all ready for the cheddar and bacon patties for the burgers. I'm frying three pounds of sausage for our breakfast burritos. I am preparing two dozen eggs to scramble for the breakfast burritos.
My husband and my sous chef cutting up the bacon while I stir the eggs. You want to cook them until they are just holding together and very soft. So I got everything ready here for the breakfast burritos. We got the sausage all done. I cooked up three pounds. We have cheese grated. We've got 24 eggs all to just the creamy consistency. This is great. You don't want to overcook your eggs because they're going to be reheated again and you don't want them to be like rubber. So you just kind of want it just bare, you know, cooked, but not still soft, I guess. And then I got my salsa, avocado, and then the potatoes, which are amazing. My husband has been sneaking bites of potatoes in between shooting. And then I've got some sour cream here. I've never bought this before. It's the huge container and um, it was a way better price. So I decided to get it this time and see how we like it. Cause we eat a lot of, we love like rice and bean bowls. We eat those a lot. Those are really um, economical meals, but actually they taste delicious. So I'm just gonna get this all assembled. And this is a 12 inch tortilla and I just warmed it up on the stove. So it's super pliable on my cast iron griddle. And um, I love making homemade tortillas. They are like one of our favorite, but when I'm gonna make a whole bunch for the freezer, I just buy the 12 inch. It's just easier for me to make everything homemade. But this area, this is one of those things. I feel like it's good to know your limit, you know? Like sometimes you wanna do everything perfectly from, you know, scratch, but sometimes just getting that, that you know, burrito shell and filling up means that you're gonna have those meals on the freezer. So you can definitely make your own and they are delicious, but if you're gonna put out like 24 breakfast burritos or more, you might wanna just grab a 12 inch tortilla. So I, I always overstuff the first one because I don't know how much I need. So a little less in here, but oh, isn't that beautiful? Mm. Mm. I only have a couple avocados, so some will get avocado, some will get um, salsa, some will get some cilantro chopped on. And then I've even got this green salsa verde I'll put on, but um, it's delicious. I could eat this every day. So that actually made 17 very large stuffed burritos. We actually ate four of them for lunch, the family, us adults, and then the kids split one and they were so delicious. And now the rest of these are gonna go into the freezer and we even had a little bit of sausage left so I can use this in an egg scramble or something else during the week. So now we're gonna make the patties, which are super simple. You can double, triple, quadruple this recipe, but it's really easy. You just take two pounds of beef and you add three onions here, spring onions, and a pound of bacon. We like to get it extra crisp, chopped up finely, and then add it to the hamburger, and about two cups of cheese. And you blend that all in and you're gonna make patties freeze them and then you have hamburgers already and when you grill them 
or bake them, whatever you're gonna do, you've got that cheese and that bacon and the salt and the onion and it's all in your patty and it just makes a really easy, delicious patty that is ready for you to eat. I realized in this video that I have actually said delicious a million times. So you guys can definitely put in the comments below another adjective to use because I just think everything's delicious. I am browning two pounds of hamburger for the tater tot casserole and then I'm gonna add some corn and beans. I just kind of eye it. I make a simple bechamel white sauce and I add mushrooms. I will link to that recipe below in the description. This tater tot casserole is an ode to my grandmother, my great grandmother. She lived on the same farm as we did growing up and she made hers with the beef that they raised on their farm, a 200 acre farm in the Willamette Valley of Oregon. But grandma definitely did this recipe old style where she took you know, a couple pounds of beef and just smushed it down, opened up that can of Campbell's mushroom soup, put it on and then layered the tater tots and so through the years I switched the recipe up by actually you know cooking the meat adding vegetables because I wanted the kids to get some vegetables into this meal and then making a homemade mushroom soup by just taking that and making it with my bechamel sauce and adding the mushrooms in with the butter and it just has so much more taste and texture and yes you know we add the tater tots, which is a total treat for my kids. They think it's a pretty fun dish. This is very kid friendly. My kids love this dish. So I like to do it once in a while and I always think of my great grandma and eating at her house. And this was definitely a favorite at her house. So usually part way through making these meals, I like to take a break and get the dishes done. As you can see, that's what's gonna be next. I'm just gonna get these dishes all cleaned up, put away, and then I'm gonna take a coffee break.
Here I'm just whisking up a double batch of my pizza dough and I'm gonna keep doing that until I have about eight pizza dough balls. I always take my dough out of the mixer when it is still sticky and I finish kneading it by hand. I find that by adding the flour a little at a time while you're kneading keeps the dough soft and pliable. I just keep mixing up more pizza in the same mixing bowl. You can really mix up a lot of pizza dough in a very short amount of time.
I sprayed the bags with a little oil and I popped the dough in and squished all the air out. You do not need to let the dough rise, just put them right into the freezer bags. So I just made eight pizza doughs for the freezer. I'm actually gonna put six in the freezer and use two of them to show you guys something that I like to make with my pizza dough. Pizza dough on our last freezer meal video was huge. You guys asked me questions, you messaged me, and I just thought, okay, I need to make it again and maybe go into a little bit more detail about how I use the pizza crust and just how easy it is to make and also maybe even just telling you guys like what consistency that I like to use, um, get the dough kind of a little wetter before I knead it and just some little details like that. This is the pan that I use. I've had these pans for years. I just call this seasoning here. <laughs> um, I just throw this dough right into these pans and I like it because I can actually roll it right up to the edges because all of my pans have a little bit of a edge here all the way around. So that's why I really enjoy using this because it just rolls out that and then I make all my pizzas in just these square pans and it helps because, I don't know, I just feel like I can make big square pizzas and throw them into the oven. So I'm gonna actually use this kind of a deeper rimmed pan. I'm gonna put some olive oil in it and I'm gonna make the focaccia bread in that with olives and some rosemary and some flaky salt. And that will be delicious and I'll let it kind of rise and get all big and puffy and then put it into the put it into the oven and then I'm going to use this pizza dough and I'm going to actually make some parmesan pesto breadsticks So I got the focaccia all done. It's just beautiful and ready. And I have this last bit of dough here. I think I'll grab some olive oil, just drizzle it here. And I'm gonna make this into breadsticks with pesto, garlic, salt, seasoning, and that will go into the oven. And that will be great for, you know, like I said, you can use it with a barbecue or with anything really. Breadsticks are always a hit. And I think I'm also gonna just show you guys what the kebabs look like all done after marinating, just because sometimes with freezer meal videos, you see everything stacked up, but I also like to show, you know, kind of the end product. And I just encourage you guys to get flour in bulk because it saves you so much money. If you can, you know, afford to buy a 25 pound bag, get a 25 pound bag. If you can get 50 pound bag, get a 50 pound bag and put it in one of those buckets. Then you've got that flour. It's a lot better price than just buying a small bag. You get that savings and it's all there and it's locked in at that price. And with prices just going up, 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 I think it's really good just to kind of fill your larder up because you're locking those prices in. And that goes the same with even the freezing mills. You know, you're really freezing in that price, pun intended. <laughs> just putting all that food in there, you're really, you're keeping that price stable there until you eat that food. And it's just, I don't know, it's just wise and nice to have in your freezer. Before I get making this, these breadsticks, I wanted to also show you guys, you guys have been asking about my buckets. These are the gamma lids that screw off really nicely. I like these because then I don't have to be prying on. And here's my oatmeal in this one and flour and different things I store in it. But these are just so handy for putting in the pantry. And you guys just asked 
where you could find these. I'm going to link these, my apron, everything you guys have been asking about lately, I will have in the description below. So don't forget to look for those links, but these are the buckets and I just encourage you buy in bulk. It's so much more economical. If you can afford it, get a 50 pound or a 25 pound sack and it just lasts longer and it costs a lot less. So I have some pesto cubes that I had in the freezer that I'm gonna smear on top of this. I'm gonna add a little bit more garlic to it because I just like extra garlic. And I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, Parmesan cheese just for a little bit thicker pesto in there. And that's how I'm gonna make these breadsticks and I think they're gonna be really, really good. As you can see, the pizza dough is so versatile. You can make pizza, breadsticks, calzones, dessert pizza, and even pesto or cheese rolls. It's really nice to have in the freezer ready to go. I make pizza weekly for my family and I often post pics in the stories on Instagram. So if you want to follow along, come join me at Abby jo Slow Living. You can find my Instagram handle in the description below. I wanted to show you guys the kebabs. They're so beautiful, all done and ready to go in the barbecue. And I have leftovers and this leftover fruit and veg here is gonna go in the leftover chicken because there's a great marinade in it. Oh, it smells amazing. So the pineapple, zucchini, mushrooms, all gonna go into this marinade. And then I'm going to put this in the freezer and then on some nice day that I don't wanna make up a quick meal, I can throw this in the crock pot, cook it down, and then put it over rice. These are amazing breadsticks. You can also roll them out individually if you wanted. It's just easier for me to do a big old pan. Another thing you could have done is actually roll them out kind of like cinnamon rolls and then cut them and had just delicious pesto stuffed rolls. So, but it just has a really nice good chewy crust. It's, it's delicious and it's really easy. Freezer meals free up time and can save you money and it keeps you from running out and getting takeout or going out to a restaurant. Not that those things are bad, but if you're wanting to just have food ready to go, this is a great way. It's just to fill your freezer up for those easy meals, those easy days, and a little bit of work in the kitchen for a day, or even if you can find the time to just double and triple your meals, you can fill that freezer up with good homemade meals. I value every single one of your guys' comments, and I would love to know below, what do you guys like to put in your freezers? We can inspire each other, so put those comments down below. Thank you guys so much for being here today and for cooking with me at my cottage, and I will see you guys in the next video.